Hey guys, it is the Turtle Girl, and today we are talking about one of my favorite turtle species ever, the Diamondback Terrapin. But before we get onto the video, this is actually a collaboration video with the one and only Jenny Gaines. She is another animal YouTuber, and she does a lot of cute, adorable, and educational um, animal and reptile videos, and she owns a lot of cool reptiles and other animals. She is also doing a video about Diamondback Terrapins and their history, so definitely once you're finished with this video, check that video out, show her some love, tell her I sent you, and yeah, let's learn about Diamondback Terrapins. So this is going to be a more species-specific care video of Diamondback Terrapins. I'm just going to assume that you already know the basics of like how big your tank needs to be, that you already know about filtration and basking basics and that type of thing, so we're just going to focus on some of the more unique requirements of diamondback terrapins specifically. So first of all, let's just talk some general stuff about diamondback terrapins. So diamondback terrapins are a medium-sized turtle. They usually fall in a spectrum of between 4 inches to about 9 or 10 inches, and the males tend to be a little bit smaller than the females, so males usually end up being 4 to 6 inches and females 7 to 9 or 10-ish. As for tank size, diamondback terrapins are just like any other turtle. They like to have a lot of room to swim. They are very great swimmers, even as babies they can handle deep water, so you don't have to worry about that. And they also love to bask, so make sure to give them a good basking area with their heat and UVB in order to keep their shell and skin healthy, and this is also very crucial because they can be a little bit more sensitive to water quality. They are a very beautiful turtle, as you can see. That's why they are actually one of my favorites. They usually have a light-toned skin, like that's usually white, and sometimes this has some cool patterns on it of dots and lines. And their shells are also really pretty. They have some cool little uh, knobs on them. And these also can look different. There's actually seven different subspecies of Diamondback Terrapin. So you can see here, this is actually my one-year-old Diamondback Terrapin Hoku. He's a northern Diamondback Terrapin, so that is one of the subspecies. And one of the most unique things about Diamondback Terrapins is that because they live in the marshes on the east coast, is that they are actually brackish water turtles. And so what this means is, is that they prefer to live in an environment where their water is both a mixture of salt water and a mixture of fresh water. And so, usually when you keep these in an aquarium, sometimes you will have to keep them in brackish water. And so let me explain some of the problems that could arise with the fact that um, diamondback terrapins are brackish water. So, Usually because they are in brackish water, they are not as exposed to bacteria in the water because the salt usually kills all of that. So when you keep them at home in a freshwater aquarium usually, because freshwater is a lot easier to maintain than brackish, there is bacteria in the water that um, they are not as, I guess, immune to. So you have to be very careful with your water quality. When you have diamondback terrapins, they can be a little more sensitive. If you want a diamondback terrapin, just make sure that you are either keeping them in brackish water, which I'm not going to go into because I don't actually keep my turtles in brackish, but definitely if you're keeping fresh water, make sure you're doing your water changes. Make sure you have the proper filter size and preferably even over filter a little bit. And also keep in mind that it also depends where you are getting your animal. So if you get a captive bred diamondback Terrapin, they usually will acclimate to fresh water a lot easier than a captive hatched diamondback terrapin, which means that eggs are taken out of the wild. But actually, diamondback terrapins are like I think they are on the watch list as an kind of like an endangered species because they are rather scarce in the wild, and so there's a lot of people working to conserve them. And so always make sure that you are getting a captive bred animal from a reputable breeder. Please note it can actually be legal, or you might need a permit to keep a terrapin as a pet in certain states, particularly on the East Coast, which I did forget to mention, so check your state laws, usually the Fish and Wildlife Department. And to find where you can buy diamondback terrapins, usually you can find them online. I found quite a few breeders on Instagram, not so much on certain like classified, so like the king snake classifieds or fauna classifieds. I haven't seen much of diamondback terrapins on there, but if you search around on Instagram and other Facebook turtle groups, Usually you can find a breeder of diamondback terrapins. I will link a couple good ones in the links below. And as for feeding, diamondback terrapins are majorly carnivores. In the wild, their diet consists of crabs, snails, fish, uh, shrimp, and so they really like their meats. Their staple diet will be a regularly formulated turtle pellet, but they really love um, extra treats. 
So I like to offer Diamondback Terrapins live guppies, live feeder guppies to chase around. That's really great enrichment for them to hunt and eat fish and that's also some of the extra protein that they love. And also snails. Another interesting thing about Diamondback Terrapins is that they have a very, very strong jaw because naturally in the wild they have snails and crabs and shrimp and so they have to be able to break those shells and actually their jaw and their what's called their crush plate on the inside of their mouth. You have to feed them crunchy foods in order to actually wear down that crush plate. Um, so crunchy foods like snails and you can even offer things like cuddle bone and another thing that you can do to help with this crush plate is you can actually put crushed coral in your aquarium and this is a substrate that some people use in order to um, what's called buffering the pH. When you use crushed coral as a substrate the diamondback terrapin will actually eat it and this will help keep the diamondback terrapin's crush plate in check. But I think that's pretty much it about Diamondback Terrapin. Just make sure you're really keeping an eye on that water quality if you are not using brackish water and also make sure you are keeping an eye on that crush plate and remember that they like a lot of protein. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and learned something about Diamondback Terrapins and if you want to see more stuff about Diamondback Terrapins definitely check out Jenny's video and go ahead and drop a comment there and tell her I sent you and I will see you guys next Friday. Have a totally awesome day. Bye!